Stand by for action. We are about to launch Stingray. Anything can happen in the next half hour. in range. Excellent. Arming warheads on missiles. In range. Now. Stand by to fire. And make sure you miss. Both missiles are biased five degrees from target area. Good. Fire. Excellent. You missed. Now shut down motors. Shutting down motors. Good. Now we are a sitting target. Do you think it will work? It must. It must. Grouper, they're turning. They're coming into attack. Good. Now all we do is wait. <laughs> Coming straight for us, Grouper. This is crazy. I, I can't go through with it. Yes, it's crazy. Crazy enough to succeed. Complete success! This means that there is not a vessel in the world that can destroy us. We are infallible. Yes. The new metal that our ship is constructed of is virtually indestructible. Prepare Delta missiles. And this time, shoot to kill. It is certain knowledge that our craft is invincible. We can carry out our main plan. The complete and utter destruction of Marineville. Marineville tracking station calling. Unidentified craft approaching Marineville. You were right, Lieutenant. Try contacting him on the radio. Yes, sir. Submarine craft in area of Marineville. This is Marineville control. Identify yourself. They're getting very close. Switch video scans through the video phone, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. 
Lieutenant, I don't like the look of it at all. Look at those missiles. Order the Stingray crew to stand by. Yes, sir. This is Marineville Control. Stand by for battle stations. Battle stations will commence in two minutes from now. This is Troy, Commander. What's happened? This is Lieutenant Fisher here, Captain Tempest. It's an emergency. Report to the tower immediately. You'd better use the subway. We're going down in about 90 seconds. Right. Okay, Lieutenant, sound battle stations. Yes, sir. Unexpected, Father. I was in the Marineville supermarket when the emergency started. Very interesting. Now get to your post, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Unidentified craft closer. Range now 6,000 yards. Okay, Atlanta. Sound launch stations. Yes, sir. Hello, Tower. Missile unit standing by awaiting instructions. All missiles to be placed at green. P.W. O.R. Enemy missiles launched. Stingray still launching. Fire interceptors. Keep clear. Underwater interceptors have been fired. Turn 180. Air brakes maximum. 180. Air brakes maximum. Enemy missiles destroyed. Stingray from tower. Go ahead, tower. Okay, Troy. Over to you. Destroy that craft. PW OR. is zigzagging around. Position, green zero seven. Standby number one and two sting missile. Standing by with one and two. Fire. Two direct hits. Good shooting, Skippo. Phones. Look, it's not even damaged. Well, let's head back. We'll never catch it now. Well, somebody tell me why that thing isn't in a thousand little pieces. Gentlemen, the position is clear. This enemy craft is made of a metal entirely unknown to us. A metal that can withstand the strongest forces that we can bring to bear. Clearly, we have to develop a new nose cone that will enable our missiles to penetrate the hull before they explode. Well, you've given us the complete picture, Commander. Except the most important thing. What about the new nose cone for our missiles? You, Troy, will collect a top scientist and bring him to Marineville. Message for you, sir. Thanks, Lieutenant. If this is the cable I've been waiting for, it'll tell us who it is. Professor Burgoyne. And so, Professor Burgoyne, that's the story. My instructions were to pick you up and fly you back to Marineville. Time is the one thing we haven't got. Professor Burgoyne? Oh, no, he's asleep. I spent an hour giving him the entire situation and he hasn't heard a word. He's known to be a bit eccentric, but it looks to me as if we've got a nut in our hands. Captain Tempest, I am not asleep. Nor am I a nut. My eyes were closed because I was concentrating. You said that we hadn't much time, and I'm not wasting any. No, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. 
It seems to me that the problem is relatively simple, though not entirely straightforward. We have to produce a nose cone for your sting missiles, which is even harder than the metal that this strange craft you describe is made from. Yes, sir. In order to do this, I will need an elaborate piece of equipment known as a Sark Mark VI. Yes, sir. I'll organize one for you as soon as we land at Marineville. I am most impressed with your efficiency, Captain Tempest. Why, thank you, sir. Most impressive. Particularly in view of the fact that I am the man who invented the structural atomic regeneration computer Mark V. And I haven't yet designed the Mark VI. Tower from Philippine Station 178. Sounding received from unknown craft. Didn't waste any time. Find out where Troy is, Atlanta. Lieutenant, give me an estimated time of arrival of the enemy craft. I want to know just how long we've got. Marineville, 800 miles to the east of us. Excellent. In just 24 hours, the alien craft will arrive at Marineville. So the alien craft will be here in 24 hours, and Troy is just arriving. That gives Professor Burgoyne just under 24 hours to produce a new metal for our nose cones, a task that would normally take months. What's their frequency, Atlanta? I want to talk to Troy. Marineville Executive Jet Squadron overflying Marineville, sir. Now, as soon as you touch down, Troy, I want you up here in the tower. Yes, sir. I'll bring Professor Burgoyne with me. Let's hope your Professor Burgoyne knows what he's doing. I only hope he's not one of those crazy eggheads. I've had a lot of experience in dealing with guys like this. And you have to be firm, straight to the point. Yes, sir. I know what you mean, but I've, I've got a feeling you've started off on the wrong foot. Professor Burgoyne has been listening to the whole of this conversation. Oh, no. You know, Father, I think you're more scared of meeting Professor Burgoyne than the enemy craft. What utter nonsense, Atlanta. Have you ever known me to be scared of anyone? Why, these professors may be clever people in their own sort of way, but they're not men of action. They're men of words. Uh, but, Father... You see, Atlanta, I'll have him eating out of the palm of my hand. But, Father, he's here. He's here in the control room. Here? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, Professor Burgoyne, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to Marineville. Uh, Commander Shore, I am a man of action and not words. Time is the one thing we're short of. Now, I have prepared a list of equipment that I require. On the head of the list is a piece of equipment known as a Sark Mark VI. You'll have one immediately. I have already explained to your captain here the position relating to the Sark Mark VI, and I don't intend to spend any time explaining it to you. Yes, sir. I will further require a laboratory to work in. You will have the finest laboratory that any man could wish for, and it will be housed right here in the control tower. I will personally attend... If I may continue, Commander... I shall require a laboratory in an old building as far away from the control tower as possible. Now, if you will excuse me, I have work to do. Uh, pr professor, uh, uh, Professor Burgoyne, I, I was simply going to... Uh... You were saying, Father? I was saying, Atlanta. And I guess I'm more scared of Professor Burgoyne than that alien craft at present bearing down on Marineville. Anyway, let's get moving. Cancel battle stations for the time being. Yes, sir. What is our present position, Noctus? You have maintained our course well, Grouper. It is now 16 hours before we arrive at Marineville. Good. I am going off watch now. I am switching to the automatic controls. If there are any problems, call me. Lieutenant Fisher, although we have a problem with Professor Burgoyne, the overriding problem, of course, is that an enemy vessel is approaching. 
I want you to go out and provide him with everything he requires. Yes, sir. I'll see what I can fix up. Oh, uh, and Lieutenant. Yes, sir. As far away from the tower as possible. Yes, sir. Now, before you leave me, Commander Shore, I want to make a last-minute check. Uh, yes, sir. It would appear that this is the oldest building in the Marineville establishment. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. We uh, we call it the Marineville Cooler. Uh, uh, sort of jailhouse. But you see... Uh... And uh, from the brief look around that I've had, I would say that there's not another building within a mile. Also correct? Oh, well, yes, sir, but uh, well, didn't you ask that... And I understand that you have given instructions that... Uh, no one in Marineville is to approach this uh, building? Well, they have received that instruction, but uh, I... Commander Shore, you have taken tremendous trouble to give me precisely the facilities that I requested. Now, if you will excuse me. Why, 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 of course. Okay, Lieutenant, you heard what the man said. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Four hours to make the modification, then six hours infusion... Mm-hmm, yes, I think I stand a chance. It's been four hours since that guy started work. And there hasn't been one sign of activity. We're expected to just wait around here with an enemy craft bearing down on us. It's too much for any man to stand. Uh, we've only got four hours left and we just sit here. Well, you heard the commander, Troy. He said no matter what happens, we were supposed to do just what the professor said and on no account go near the cooler. Don't say it, Lieutenant. Please don't say it. Well, I was only going to ask you... If there was any sign of activity. Well, the answer is no. Sorry, sir. I know how you feel, sir. You do? Yes, sir. Well, then why don't you shut up? And don't say yes, sir. No, sir. I'm just going to take another look to see if there's any sign of activity. At least he tried. He sure did try. Boy, I had no idea the experiment he was doing was so dangerous. Now we know why he didn't want anyone near the cooler while he was working. Poor Professor Borgoyne. To think of all the things I said about him. He may have been a nut, but he was a truly great man. Thank you, Professor, Professor, Professor Boyd. Boyd. Oh, I find what you say uh, very touching and deeply moving. What in thunder is going on? We thought you were killed in the explosion. Well, I wasn't, Commander. I am very much alive. You see, I was taking cover. The explosion you heard was caused by the chain reaction necessary in producing the metal for the new nose cone. And I am pleased to say that the experiment has been a great success. I can't guarantee it will work, but I think it stands an excellent chance. Lieutenant Fisher, how long have we got? About 55 minutes, sir. Okay. I want the rocket disposal squad down here at once. The nose cone extracted. Atlanta, return Marineville to battle stations immediately. 
And as soon as the nose cone is located and fitted, Stingray must be launched. Power from Stingray, Seaborne. Give me approximate position of enemy craft. Enemy craft and Marineville approaches, Sector 1, reference 2400. Okay, Atlanta. But there's nothing I can do yet. Professor Burgoyne is still carrying out final adjustments on the missile. How you doing, Professor? Uh, just carrying out final alignment, Captain. I've got it, Troy. What's the range? Hold it, Troy. Hold it just a minute. Yeah. She's coming straight for us. 2,000 yards. <laughs> Stingray almost in range. Don't they realize that we are indestructible? Prepare missiles Delta-1 and Delta-2. Eighteen hundred yards, Troy. Professor, it's only a matter of seconds before that craft opens fire. What's the situation? You'll have to chance it. Load the missile. Bones, load the missile. <laughs> Fourteen hundred yards. Thirteen hundred yards. Missile ready. Bearing twenty-four green. Twenty-four green. Fire. Range twelve hundred yards. Trajectory bias two degrees left. to escape with your lives. Although our new missile proved too good for your craft, it was not good enough to totally destroy it. Nevertheless, it was sufficient to put an end to your ambitions to destroy Marineville and the civilized world as we know it today. Now, after serving a jail sentence, you will be free to return to your people. And I hope, explain to them the type of people that we are, that our mission is not to destroy life, but to preserve it. Okay, Troy, take him away. Yes, sir. You know, Commander Shore, when I first arrived here, I thought you were a nut. But seeing you in action has changed all that. Well, there... I guess you know what my feelings were when you first arrived, Professor, but uh, you sure saved the day. Well, you know, Commander, it takes all types to save a world. Start whenever you're near. Marina, Aqua Marina, why can't you whisper the words that my heart is longing to hear? Your magic to me, a beautiful mystery. I'm certain to fall, I know, because you enthrall me so. Marina, Aqua Marina, why don't you say that you'll always stay close to my heart? 